Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1567, maximum length of subarray with positive product. Given an array of integers nums, find the maximum length of a subarray where the product of all of its elements is positive. A subarray of an array is a consecutive sequence of zero or more values taken out of that array. Return the maximum length of a subarray with positive product. So let's look at our uh, nums here and try to figure out why the solution is four. So if we just take a subarray one, obviously that has a positive product because it's just one. So the length here could be one. Now, what if we took one and two? Obviously that's minus two. So that wouldn't work because that's a negative, right? We, our product has to be positive. So what if we added the minus three? Well, we can multiply the minus three and here we get six or we could take the subarray minus two times minus three and that would also give us six which is positive but since this is longer we want this is our kind of best solution so our best solution so far is three and then we get to the four so what we could do we could have you know minus two times minus three times four which is going to be of length you know, len equals three, we could have minus three times four, but that's negative 12, which is not positive. So we can't go with that solution. We could go just four, but that's length of one, which isn't best than the three that we found so far. Or we could go one times minus two times minus three times four, which is going to be 12. Oh no, sorry, this is going to be uh, 24. Whoops, yeah, so 24. And obviously that's length four and it has a positive sum. So that's where we get the four from. So that's really all you need to do for this problem is you need to basically just figure out um, how many, you know, how long your subarray is uh, at any point that you have a positive, um, you know, sum here. And the trick to this question is that you need to keep track of positive lengths and negative lengths because Remember that when two negatives are multiplied together, you can actually get a positive. So we'll need to keep track of you know, our positive lengths and our negative lengths and use that to kind of update our solution. So what we're gonna do for this problem is we're gonna define three variables. We're gonna say answer, which is going to represent the maximum length, which is our result. We're gonna say pause, and we're gonna say negative. And initially these are all gonna be zero. And what positive and negative represent is basically at any given point in the array like here 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 or here it's basically the length of a subarray that results in a positive product or the length of a subarray at our current in index whatever it is you know it could be the two it could be the three the four uh, that represents a negative product and what we want to do is based on the number that we see in the array, so like one, negative two, negative three, four, there's three cases. Case one is going to be that our number is actually greater than zero, in which case we need to increment our positive count because remember that any positive uh, times a positive is always going to be a positive, right? And remember that any negative times a negative is always going to be, oops, it's always going to be positive. And then any negative times a positive is always going to be negative. So we need to keep track of, you know, whether it's negative or positive when we apply the current number. And what we're going to do is, again, if it's greater than zero, then that means that whatever the positive length is, we can just add one to it. So we can say, you know, our positive length plus one. And then what we're going to do for the negative length here is we're gonna say as long as the negative length isn't zero, we can increase its, you know, increase it by one. And obviously the reason that we can't increase it by um, by one if it's zero is because, you know, zero times whatever is always gonna be zero. So that product will actually, it's not going to count. So what we need to do in the second case is if number is actually less than zero, we're basically gonna do the opposite of what we did here in that um, basically we want to assign our you know positive to be one plus the negative because remember a negative times a negative will be a positive so we'll increase our positive length if 
uh, you know, by whatever the length of the negative is, because now that we multiply by another negative, we're going to get a positive. And then for the negative case here, um, we either reset it to zero or we just, oh, sorry, we just say it's one plus whatever the positive length is, um, because we multiply by, you know, the negative number and then we just get a negative back. And the third case is actually a bit of a edge case, and that is that the number is actually zero. Uh, if the number is zero, then we have to reset our counts back down to zero because now our product will be zero and that's not um, something that we can work with. So we just have to reset our length back down to zero because we can just think of it as actually starting fresh. So that's what we wanna do at each iteration through the loop. We will make either one of these three um, things, and then we're going to update our answer. So the answer will be the maximum of whatever the current answer is and always the length of the positive where positive is the length of, you know, the positive uh, subarray that would give, you know, a positive result at any given index in the array. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I know it's a little bit confusing. I think once we go to the code, it's actually really simple. I think it's only about 10 lines of code. So it should be a lot clearer once we actually code it out. So I'll see you in the editor and hopefully we clear up any confusion. We are back in the editor and let's code this up. Remember that we need those three variables. The first of which is going to be our answer. The second of which is going to be a variable called positive. And then we also need a variable called negative. And remember that positive and negative is going to be the length of a subarray whose product is positive or negative. Um, you know, respectively at our current index. So what we're going to do is define those variables. So we're going to say ands equals pause equals neg. And what we're going to do is we're going to say for num in nums. Remember, we have three cases. We're going to say if num is actually less, oh, sorry, greater than zero, we'll do the positive case first. Then if it's positive, the length of our positive subarray is going to be equal to one plus whatever our positive um, array length is at the current time. Then for the negative, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say it's going to be one plus the length of the negative if negative is basically non-zero, otherwise it's gonna be zero, right? Because if it was zero and then we multiply it by negative, we're still gonna get zero. So we don't care about it. We can just reset the length of the subarray back down to zero because we want strictly negative, not you know zero. And the reason we don't do that for positive is because technically zero is a positive number. So even if positive is zero, um, it's still one plus that because we can just count the current number as our only one. Whereas with negative, we want strictly negative numbers. Cool. So now let's do the negative case. So we're going to say else if num is less than zero. What we want to do here is we want to say pause neg. So we're going to assign the variables positive and negative equal to one plus uh, negative. So positive is going to get assigned to one plus negative if negative is basically non-zero. Because remember, if we have a negative number and we're multiplying it by our negative, then we're then going to get a positive, but that's only going to happen if negative is actually negative, right? If it's zero, then multiplying it by a negative, we're just going to get zero. So it doesn't count. So we need to make sure that negative is actually non-zero. Otherwise, positive just becomes zero. And then what negative is going to become is if we our length of our negative is going to be basically one plus whatever the previous positive length was is the length of our new kind of negative subarray apologies for the sirens in the background at this current time and we actually want to do this on one line and the reason for this is this is python specific but basically oh my god again apologies for these sirens i don't know what's going on outside um we want to do this on one line and the reason for that is because python will actually execute these two things at the same time and we don't have to worry about this assignment of our variable in the first case the positive actually screwing up what we assign here for the negative. It'll actually happen at the same time and we don't have to worry about the variables getting messed up because if we first assign positive to one plus neg, if neg uh, is greater than zero, or sorry, if negative doesn't equal zero, otherwise zero, right? This is gonna screw up the positive value that we need to use for negative. It's actually going to change 
Um, so what we could do to get around that, if you're doing another language, is just to create a temporary variable for the old value of pause, and that's actually what you want to add here. But since we're using Python, we can actually just do it one line uh, at the same time and get the same result. So just a little uh, trick there. Otherwise, we have the case that basically our number is zero, in which case we need to reset our subarray length back down to zero because obviously we're multiplying by zero and that nullifies our positive and negative length. So we're gonna say pause equals neg equals zero. And then at the end, remember that we're looking for the maximum uh, subarray whose product is positive. So we wanna say ands is gonna be the maximum of, our of whatever our current answer is and whatever the length of pause is, which remember pause represents the length of a subarray whose product is positive at our current number. So that is what we do. And at the end, all we need to do is simply return our answer. So let's just double check. We haven't made any bugs here and neg. Uh, oh, pff, I didn't assign it to zero. Whoops. Okay. Let's just double check this. Always good to check. Okay. Let's submit it now and we are good to go. Okay, cool. What is the time and space complexity for our algorithm here? Well, as you can see, all we're doing is going from left to right over nums, right? So we only touch each num once and we do some comparisons here, but all these comparisons happen in constant time, which means that our runtime complexity is gonna be big O of N. And space complexity wise, as you can see, we don't actually define any extra data structures. All we have are these basically pointers for answer, positive and negative which are all constant space allocations. So our space is actually a big O of one, and this is the most optimal solution you have for this problem. So that is how you solve this question. Uh, hopefully the solution makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, maybe slow it down, watch it a few times, uh, maybe play around with the you know, input arrays that LeetCode gives you to kind of break it down piece by piece so you can see exactly how the solution works. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If there's any videos you'd like to see, please just let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to make those for you guys. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.